Now, I am requesting our first presenter to present her presentation, Dr. Mehriba Alam Anonam. Assalamu alaikum, my respected teachers and my fellow colleagues. Uh, I, at first, I would like to thank Professor Mamun Mustafi sir and his team for giving me the opportunity to speak here. I am Dr. Mehruba Alam, as introduced beautifully by Dr. Mithila, and my uh, topic today is fungal UTI. As we all know, fungiria is common in hospitalized patients and is generally benign. But invasive infection of the kidney is unusual and difficult to treat. Vast majority of the fungal infections of the kidney and bladder result from candida species, especially candida albicans. And among all patients of UTI, candida is the third most common organism isolated. In a multi-center prospective surveillance study involving 861 patients, Candida albicans was found to be responsible in 52% of patients and Candida glabrata in 16 patients of fungal UTI. A variety of other fungi which rarely can, uh, be, can cause uh, fungal UTI and disseminated infections are listed here. There are two mechanisms by which candida species can infect the urinary tract. Firstly, the infection can begin in the lower tract and ascend to the upper urinary tract. And secondly, there is, can be hematogenous dissemination to the kidneys. Ascending infection is thought to result from a basic urinary reflux of the fungi from the urinary bladder. And presence of an indwelling bladder catheter is associated with formation of a biofilm which allows the persistent colonization by the candida species. In the uh, above mentioned uh, surveillance study, the most common risk factor that was found uh, to be associated with fungal UTI was prior antibiotic therapy which were found to be in, present in 90% patients. Other risk factors found includes urinary tract drainage device, diabetes, urinary tract pathology, and malignancy. In ICU, fungal UTI is also very common. The risk factors involved here are older age group, diabetes, length of ICU stay, ventilator support, and parenteral nutrition. In community-based studies, all the above mentioned risk factors are prevalent, uh, plus antimicrobial overuse is, should be emphasized should be kept in mind. In natural history of the candida UTI or uh, fungal UTI is asymptomatic candidaria, the development of ascending infection of the kidney, candidemia, the, and the possibility that candidaria is a manifestation of the disseminated infection. And in appropriate host, uh, urinary tract obstruction, emphysematous pyelonephritis, papillary necrosis should also be considered. Candidaria in renal transplant recipients was previously thought to be a risk factor for ascending infection and candidemia. Risk factor for development of candidaria similar to those of uh, like non-transplant patients. And treatment of um, antifung treatment with antifungal is not associated with uh, so much survival benefit, although patient with candida has very worse survival. Candidemia associated infection is usually bilateral and consists of multiple microabscesses in the cortex and medulla. The patient presents with flank and or abdominal pain, renal angle tenderness, and abdominal tenderness as well. Renal function is only rarely compromised in case of adults. A papillary necrosis can occur and the sloughed papillae may serve as a nidus for fungus ball formation. This is a, a picture of a kidney photograph of a kidney showing numerous microabscesses that is started all over the surface of the kidney. An ascending infection usually has a subacute or chronic course. Here only the kidney is the only organ that is involved. That's thus it's unilateral and involves the renal pelvis and medulla with sparing of the cortex. But here also fungal ball perinephric abscess uh, can occur as can EPN, emphysematous pyelonephritis. Ascending infections, uh, risk factor, uh, or predisposing factors involve all sorts of renal tract obstruction and manipulation. Uh, uh, focal signs may be present, but fever or other sign of systemic infection are usually absent. The burning question always is, in case if I find a report of candidaria, the burning question is always, is it a, just a colonization or an infection? 
is a very difficult to resolve. And pyuria is so much so common in patients with indwelling bladder, bladder catheter that it is often not very helpful in di as a diagnostic criteria for infection in candiduria. Concomitant bacteria is also very frequently present. So in patients who do not have an indwelling bladder catheter or bacteria, the presence of pyuria is helpful as a diagnostic tool. Uh, in case of urine culture, no studies have uh, established the importance of quantitative urine culture for the diagnosis of candida UTI. So in case of diagnosis, when an isolated candida is found, it is very difficult to dis distinguish between contamination of the sample, colonization of the bladder, local bladder infection, or upper tract disease involved with <coughs> excuse me, involving the renal parenchyma. So in, uh, for diagnosis, the number of yeast or the presence of pyuria do not distinguish fungal colonization from fungal infection. Although uncommonly found, renal uh, kidney involvement in fungus uh, is diagnostic, uh, can, be di can be said to have kidney involvement if uh, the f identification of the fungal cast in urine cytology specimen can be demonstrated by periodic acid shift or silver stains. Patient with candiduria who have systemic sign or symptoms should be evaluated for disseminated infection as well by blood culture and imaging. And uh, species identification is important for therapeutic importance because as for example, resistant to fluconazole is common in case of candida glabrata and candida cruzei. Imaging uh, should always be considered in especially diabetic patients or patients with other urologic abnormalities and neonates if they have persistent candiduria. And for imaging, uh, we should uh, undertake renal ultrasound or abdominal ultrasound and computer tomography. Abdominal CT or ultrasound may show hydronephrosis, fungus ball or perinephric abscess associated with ascending infection. And in case of main, rare cases of prostatic fungal prostatic abscess should be, can be diagnosed by transrectal ultrasound. Uh, along with uh, abdominal ultrasonography, an intravenous pyrogram is also very helpful, but CT scan is superior to both of them. And uh, in, uh, now here comes the part for treatment. In case of bacteria, um, I mean asymptomatic candiduria, it rarely requires treatment. Uh, treatment is only advised if the patient is neutropenic or a very low birth weight in baby or has urinary tract manipulation. Asymptomatic patients without risk factors, antifungal therapy has not been proven of value because of rapid recurrence and uh, presence of uh, resistance. So attention should be focused uh, upon reducing the risk factors for acquisition of candida like removal of bladder catheter or stent and also discontinuation of ongoing antibiotics. If complete removal of the stent or the catheter is not possible, then replacement with new device or maybe um, intermittent bladder catheterization is, can be done, which can be helpful. These are the doses schedule of asymptomatic candiduria for high risk patients. Asymptomatic candiduria in renal transplant is no longer an absolute indication for treatment and should, but all should be considered if there is a high risk of graft or device involvement, such as early after transplant, when the stents are in place. Symptomatic candidaria treatment, we have only a few agents in our hand uh, for therapy of localized bladder or kidney infection. And while awaiting the culture sensitivity report, we should start empirically, but we should keep in mind about the patient's uh, past medical history, past microbiology data, and the, um, and the agent which will have adequate concentration in the urine. So which one to choose? If there is no risk of uh, fluconazole resistant candida infection, fluconazole should always be the first drug of choice. At risk, uh, fluconazole uh, resistant candida infection patients should be treated with amphotericin B deoxycholate, but their liposomal formi formulation should be avoided. And treatment of uh, candidaria should be tailored according to the identified candida species, as well as whether the infection is localized or disseminated. In case, uh, these are the doses schedule of the fluconazole for cystitis and pyelonephritis. The duration should be 14 days. 
uh, and but uh, renal function should be kept in mind and dose modified according to renal function. Uh, fluconazole resistant candida should can also be treated uh, for pyelonephritis and cystitis by IV and photericin B deoxycholate with or with or flu cystocin. And careful uh, laboratory monitoring for flu cystocin should be uh, kept in mind for their potential toxicity. Other agents uh, for fluconazole resistant candida UTI that have come up are uh, caspofungin. My Mika Fangin, they are showing promising results in few studies. Experience with other azoles uh, like Vodiconazole, Posaconazole uh, are very limited, so it should only be kept, their use should only be considered uh, in, if there is no other alternative therapies are in hand. And complications of fungal infection of the kidneys are perinephric abscess, fungal ball, also known as fungal bezoars and fungal infection of the renal allograft. Perinephric abscesses should be treated by percutaneous uh, nephrostomy and percutaneous drainage uh, with large bore catheter and irrigation may be required. Uh, side by side, antifungal, systemic antifungal therapy should be used. Uh, for fungal ball, surgical removal is needed, uh, but uh, along uh, with that, fluconazole and amphotericin B must be used as systemic therapy. Prosthetic abscess is, um, may occur in older diabetic males, may only present with urinary retention. Their diagnosis is done usually by rectal uh, ultrasound. They need drainage by an interventional radiologist and fluconazole started for a duration of four weeks at least. If there is no response, the fluconazole duration can be increased uh, and if still the patient is non-responsive, TURP may be considered. And renal transplant site infection is a very unique condition in Nick syndrome. Here the renal allograft is infected or contaminated during the process of harvesting. Here direct fungal invasion of the arterial wall occurs resulting in renal arteritis, aneurysm formation and rupture. There, are, there may be urinoma formation and surgical site infection, graft site abscesses. Most patients lose their graft. This condition has a very high mortality. For prescribing um, fluconazole, uh, drug interaction should be kept in mind with very common drugs like sulfonylurea, warfarin, phenytoin, cyclosporin, tacrolimus, etc. These are the doses scheduled for amphotericin B, flu cytosine, and different here. Yeah, these are the uh, renal dose modification for fluconazole and flu cytosine. There are other fungi uh, like cryptococcus, Saccharomyces, molds, renal aspergillus, which I'm not elaborating. They rarely affect the genitourinary tract, but has very high mortality, so always should be kept in mind. These are, this is an original article uh, published uh, that isolated bilateral renal mycormycosis in apparently immunocompetent patient event, uh, a, a case series from India. And uh, so my key message, take home messages I would like to remind that fungiria is rare in healthy individuals but common among hospitalized patients and in those with significant comorbidities. Almost always the organisms found in urine are candida species. So uh, fungal UTI in other words means candida infection of the kidney and the bladder. The most difficult diagnostic problem is determining when infection rather than colonization is present. Diagnostic tests have not been standardized and there are a few randomized uh, trials addressing the treatment protocols. Treatment of asymptotic candidaria is not recommended until and unless at high risk, the patient is at high risk for dissemination. And fluconazole is always the first drug of choice if the patient is not resistant or Cannot, it cannot be prescribed due to any other res response. Thank you all for your patience hearing and I wish you all a very happy new year. Thank you. Thank you Dr. Mehruba Alam Anana Madam for your nice and elaborating presentation.